Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, we will be talking about persistence on Windows machine. Persistence is very important as it provides you access to your victim's machine when your victim logs off and logs back in the next time. This is especially true when your initial access callback is from an end user's machine and not from a server. If your initial access is through a compromised end user, your victim will very likely only be online and available for a few hours before logging off. This means that your session will get terminated and it is very important to maintain persistence so that the next time your victim logs back in, you will receive a session call back to your command and control C2 server. Let's take a look on the MITRE attack knowledge base on persistence. There are many techniques documented over here for Windows, Linux and even Mac OS. Obviously, we will not be going through all of it. We will only touch on a few techniques and share some practical hands-on examples on them. One of the most common techniques to achieve persistence would definitely be this one over here T1547001 Registry, Run Keys and Startup Folders If we were to click into it, the page provides more detailed explanation on how this would work It also provides several examples and references on the APT groups that were observed to be using the technique This is pretty cool As shown in the page, while the description and explanation is great and helpful what we need is the practical commands to achieve this. We want to know exactly how we can achieve persistence via registry run keys and startup folders, like what exact commands we need to execute. This is where the Red Canary Atomic Red Team GitHub repository comes in. This GitHub repository provides a wealth of useful references that teaches you what to execute in order to test certain techniques listed in the MITRE attack knowledge base. If we were to look at T1547001 specifically, which is what we are interested in, we can see that it provides the commands needed. In this technique, we can see that there are a total of 17 test cases provided that we can get our hands on. Some of it will require administrator privileges, while some of them don't. The ones that affect system-wide, such as modifying the HK local machine HKLM, will require administrator privileges, while the ones that only affects the current user, such as HKCU, will not require admin privileges. Let's give the first one a try. Before we begin, we will need a program that we want to execute as the payload. Let's quickly generate a simple proof of concept program that will display a message box. Personally, I prefer the DLL file type as a payload, so I am going to generate that. This should do the job. Now let's hop over to our Windows machine and get started. Let's first create a fresh new low privilege user. In this practical demonstration, we will be showing just a few low privilege examples. Feel free to use the references shared and provided to try the rest of the techniques yourself. Okay, we have now created a low privilege user account. Let's switch over to the account. Let's transfer the payload over to our Windows machine. Let's place the DLL payload in the user's temp directory, which is a pretty realistic example. Alright, now let's try to execute the DLL payload first before testing out the persistent techniques. Let's execute our DLL payload file with run DLL32. Awesome, it worked. Now let's proceed with the first example, which is adding a run key under the HKCU Software Microsoft Windows current version run registry key. Now let's log off and log back in with our user. The payload should get executed. Awesome, it worked. This demonstrates that we can achieve persistence on a compromised Windows machine by adding a key value under the registry key as demonstrated. Now let's take a look at another example which does not require admin privileges again. Let's try out this startup folder one. If you were to drop a payload under program data startup folder, it will require admin privileges as it is going to be system-wide. 
we can proceed with the app data example which does not require admin privileges as it only affects the current user. Basically, if you drop a file in this startup folder shown over here, once the user logs in, it will get executed. Let's give it a try. Similarly to the first example, our DLL payload is already in our temp directory. What we can do here is to create a bad file or a shortcut file or even a VBS file to execute our DLL payload. Anything goes. Let's try it out with a shortcut LNK file for simplicity. This should do the job. The shortcut file should execute run DLL32 which will then execute our DLL payload. Let's give it a try. Awesome. There are many other techniques with the commands provided as shown in the Atomic Weight Team GitHub repository. Feel free to give it a try and perhaps even implement some of it into your payloads. As mentioned earlier, persistence is really important especially when your initial access is coming from an end-user machine as compared to a server, since the server will most likely stay available all the time. If you do not have persistence established, your access will get terminated once your victim logs off his computer. All of the references shown in the video will be provided in the video's description, so be sure to check them out. I have recently created a free phishing course available on Udemy. This phishing course is completely free and it is only about 30 minutes long. Several phishing techniques and popular tools such as GoFish is demonstrated in the course. The link to the free course will be available in the video's description. If you have found the video to be useful and interesting, please help to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It will really help out the channel a lot. Thanks all, I appreciate it. I will see you all soon in the next one. Bye.